And we're back in the yard. Uh, so I'm actually here on a PM, but uh, I noticed that the thermostat was showing me an error code. So we'll show you what that error code is. Yeah, so as you saw, we're getting a high suction pressure. Um, I was cycling in heat mode. So this is a heat pump with a gas fired furnace as a auxiliary heat to York Affinity. Um, so let's see what's going on with it. So here we go. So it's saying that the suction pressure is too high. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, see that little blue thing right there that I'm trying to point at? Here, let's uh, I'll use this to point at it. Uh, that thing right there, That's that used to be the suction pressure sensor. And you can see it's on the true suction because it's the heat pump. All right, so apparently at some point it was, that, that sensor failure fa failed. So instead of brazing in a new one, somebody installed a new one. They just put like a service T here. Can you see what's wrong with this? Well, the reason why we're getting a high suction pressure in heat mode is it's on the discharge line. We need to actually put it on our true suction. So we need to move this from here to there. That way it's actually getting a suction uh, pressure. So that means that this heat pump's probably been disabled this whole time. It probably just ends up locking out and running the gas heat. So we're going to go ahead and try to do that. Hopefully there's still a shader core in there. This is one of those ones where we have a pressure transducer. So I have this unplugged. That's why it's showing the last setting. So if I plug it back in, I should be getting something else. Yeah. See? We're going to test that, but we definitely have this on our discharge. So in cooling mode, it's probably fine. But in heating mode, that's why we're getting a high pressure uh, or a high suction pressure alert. So... Um, we're gonna go ahead and put it on our uh, true suction line. Um, that way, it's always, you know, reading that. So I'm gonna take that off. So, um, from what I understand, as I talked to the homeowner, apparently they had the same error, and so that resulted in this sensor getting replaced. But uh, it never seemed to have fixed the issue. I guess it was under warranty, so at least they didn't get charged for it. Um, but the tech put it in the wrong spot, so that's why they're still getting the same issue. We're going to test this uh, sensor too, just to make sure it's functional. So it looks like it's just going to default to 253 whenever it's not plugged in. And then I want to make sure it's plugged in the right spot. So right here is the suction port. So we're going to go ahead and follow these wires and make sure it's, yeah, okay, that's the right one. Sweet. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully there's still Schrader core in there or it doesn't get stuck. This is one of those ones that leaks like crazy. So here we go. Okay, cool. The Schrader's still good. So now we want to go ahead and put this on the true section. There we go. Cool. All right, we can get a little bit more slack on this pressure switch here. Alrighty then. Pop that back on there. All right. Hook up my pressure port here, and I want to see uh, if it's close or the same. All right, so I'm getting 187.3, 185. I don't know if it rounds it up, but uh, it's never going to be perfect. It'll be close, but never perfect. So we're going to go by that. Look at that. It's even going to calculate sub cool and superheat for us. That's pretty sick. All right, so we got it in cool mode. Somehow I got into service mode. I'm not exactly sure how I did that. I'll figure it out when I go into heat mode. But uh, I'm getting about the same on the suction. So we want to make sure cooling's working because that's kind of what we care about right now. I like how the status has a happy face. That's funny. <laughs> She's been running for a while. So we're about 114 on her suction, 31 degrees superheat, uh, three to five on her sub cool. Uh, so a target on this is six. So yeah, the, the refresh rate on this is kind of crappy. Um, so mine's a little bit faster, but I'm getting about the same numbers. Uh, so it seems like it's off by two PSI. So I'm not too worried about it. I think the pressure sensor is working fine. Um, and this is in cooling mode. So we're gonna go ahead and switch her back into um, heat mode and see what's going on. Cancel service mode, so I hit menu to do that, and then select, accepted, and it should kick off. 
Yep, there she goes. So let's go ahead and figure out how I got into service mode. When you first start, it's showing you this, the uh, status. So we hit menu and we just keep going over until we get modes, whoops. And we hit select and then we go here, test mode, don't do that one, keep going. Uh, service mode is what we want, select. And then we can go here to heating, select, accept it. Now we just wait for it to kick on. And I saw a charge verification mode on there, so we could probably do that to verify the refrigerant charge. Basically, it just ramps up to 100%. Fan comes on first, then the compressor will ramp up slowly. So we'll come back when that happens. All right, so she's been running for a little while. Everything seems to be pretty good. Um, definitely not getting a low suction. Pressures are slightly different, so either I'm out of calibration or the unit's out of calibration, but it's still pretty close. Well, a uh, high side seems to be off by like over 10. Yeah, so about 13 degree, or 13 PSI over. Uh, and then this is about two degrees under. So this is the newer one, so maybe that one's out of calibration, but uh, yeah, other than that, it seems to be okay. So I think we're gonna call her good. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle this from the thermostat and make sure that error code doesn't pop up again. So we're gonna go ahead and hit menu, and then we're gonna hit, it's gonna say, Cancel service mode, yes, select, accepted, and it's gonna ramp down. We will put this all back together, and then we will uh, try turning it on from the thermostat and see if we got rid of that code. Oh yeah, and then this door switch, uh, this actually kills this thing, see? Yeah, so it turns off this whole thing, that way it's not running when the panel's on. Let's see, when you take the panel off, it brings it back on, so that's what that's for. All right, so we got our heat mode. What is going on there? So yeah. So sometimes it'll say off delay uh, when it's flashing, means it's calling. So let's go check her out. Definitely receiving a call for heat, but it's on that uh, delay, delay timer is active. I think we can bypass it. We just go to menu, and we want to go into modes, I believe. Yeah. Default mode, test mode, select, bypass ASCD timer. Yes bypass there we go okay so let's see if this thing gives us an error code okay so I stepped away we got tired for got tired of waiting for it and now it's time the emergency heat's being called for so I wonder if I still got that error code now that's irritating suction pressure is at 200 but the compressor never kicked on no error code um, but I think I might have just turned the temperature up too high, so it kicked into the second stage. All right, so I set the uh, set point two degrees above the room temp. So it's been running now for a little while because I went to go service the other unit while I was waiting for all the timers to go off. So let's go make sure we don't have an error code. But typically it would give the error code and then just go into emergency heat. So I was freaking out when I saw it on emergency heat. Oh, look at this, it's giving me data. That's cool. Looks like we don't have that error code no more, so I think we're good to go. Apparently they've been having this problem for like a year or something like that. They called that other company out and uh, they diagnosed a bad pressure switch, which it probably was, or actually not pressure, pressure transducer. And then they installed it on the discharge. It was given them the same error code, so they just like, they probably just cycled it in cool. So in cooling mode is fine, but any time you put it in heat mode, it just cut off and then call for auxiliary heat. That's why the homeowner didn't really care about it so much because they still had heat. But uh, yeah, they did notice that error code that was constantly on the stat. So I think we fixed it. So if you're gonna replace these tr pressure transducers, just make sure you put them in the right spot. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, the York Affinity system. Uh, it's actually the first time I've seen one of these things. Uh, this is kind of cool. I like how it's showing me all the data. So uh, what do you guys think about these things? Um, Looks like we're not even going to need meters or probes or anything if they all start doing that. So anyway, so thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools I use uh, or don't use, uh, visit my Amazon store. Thanks for watching.